I'm Mercedes from prettywebs.com and today I'm going to show you how to make a mood board on Photoshop. This will be an instant film style mood board that's very versatile. You can stack them to look messy or neat or place them in a grid like we're going to be doing here in this tutorial. And we'll also be adding a little bit of mood to our mood board with a simple shadow cast. But I chose this instant film style right here for this mood board because it works with a lot of different types of people. Meaning if you're a very structured person and you like everything in a in neat lines, grids, this is perfect for you. But it's also perfect for those people who like the free form, free flowing style where, you know, you can just stack these and place them everywhere and just kind of get your ideas out. So it works for both types of people. So that's why I really like this instant film. So anyhow, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before we get into all of this, we are gonna need a texture and we're gonna be using one from, it's called transparenttextures.com. They have tons of free, beautiful textures. And I'm just gonna type in Polaroid. Okay, and this is the texture that we're looking for. It's called Polaroid by Daniel Beaton. And you can just click on download. I already have it on my computer, so I'm not going to do that. But this is where you would get this texture. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. I'm going to come here to File, Open. And I'm going to grab that Polaroid PNG. That's the file that I just downloaded. I'm going to click Open. And you're going to see something that looks like this. So from here, you just have to come up to Edit, Define Pattern. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it at Polaroid PNG and click OK. That's all we need this for. So I'm going to go ahead and close that out. And now we'll go ahead and get started with creating our mood board. So I'm going to go here to File, New. And I'm using dimensions 1920 by 1080 72 RGB. I'm going to click Create. OK, and then we're going to start with creating our first frame. So I'm going to come here to the Rectangle tool. And I'm gonna just click right here. I wanna make a rectangle that is 500 pixels wide and 650 pixels high. I'm gonna click OK. I'm gonna come here to the color and I'm just gonna choose just a basic white for this. I'm gonna just rename this base really quickly. And now I'm just gonna double click right here on the far right hand side. I'm gonna add some layer styles to this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is add a pattern and that's gonna be that Polaroid PNG that we just grabbed from transparenttextures.com. All of our settings are gonna stay just normal. We have a blend mode, normal opacity 100%, and our scale is at 100% as well. I'm gonna now add a drop shadow to this. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave my blend mode at multiply. I am using 323232, angle 90 degrees, my distance is four, my size is seven and that's pretty much it for that. Now I'm going to go ahead and come back to that rectangle tool and click one more time. For this one, our dimensions are going to be 430 for the width and 480 for the height. I'm going to click OK. So I'm going to just leave this white, match it up over here. So I'm just going to grab both of these right here and make sure that they are centered. So that's good. Now this is going to be our image holder and I'm going to go ahead and right click and convert this to a smart object. This is where our image is going to go. I'm going to grab that one, hold the shift key and grab the base. And now I'm going to come down here and then just choose this little link. That way if we move the image or the base, it's all going to go together. If we resize it, it'll be resized together. Now I'm going to double click right here and add an inner shadow to this. Okay, for the inner shadow, we're just going to use blend mode multiply. We're using a basic black color. I'm going to change my opacity to about 30%. My angle is 90 degrees. I'm going to uncheck global light. The distance is going to be one pixel. Our size is going to be six pixels. And I'm going to go ahead and leave it there and click OK. Okay, now we have our completed frame. So I'm just gonna grab both of these. Shift, grab the top one, hold down Shift and grab this one, and then press Command and the letter G to make a group out of those. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and make three copies of this. And you can make as many copies as you need. You can resize them and move them around as, 
needed for us we're just going to keep this as simple as possible so i'm going to go ahead and duplicate this i'm going to right click and choose duplicate group click ok so now i have two of these but i am going to have a problem with this because let me um, start adding an image in here so this is my first image holder i'm going to go to file place embedded and just grab an image okay let's start with this one i'm just going to make it bigger okay and then i'm going to close the psb file this is my smart object file hit save and you'll see that it's added it to both of these frames that's not what we want so what i'm going to have to do is come here to this image placeholder I'm going to rename this number two so i'm going to come here right click and choose new smart object via copy and then i'm going to get rid of that first one so that first one was just a copy of the first smart object which means that anything that happens to this smart object is also going to happen to the other smart object. Unless you create a new smart object, you're not going to be able to change out your images like you would need to for a mood board like this. And now we're going to right click, duplicate that group, name this number three, and we're going to do that same thing. Right click, new smart object via copy, delete the first one, we can rename this image holder three make sure that they're still linked and they are so we'll bring this over here okay i'm going to make these a little bit smaller just because i want to give them some space and then i'm going to right click duplicate this group name this photo four i'm going to space it out a little bit more i'm going to come in here right click new layer via copy delete the old one and these are still linked so we're good there and now we're just going to grab all of these i'm going to hold down the shift key grab the first one grab the last one and then i'm going to press the letter v to bring up my anchors here and so under distribution i'm choosing horizontal centers and that's just going to spread those out evenly on the canvas okay so we've got all four of our images now we can come in so i'm going to double click right here on image two i'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to come here to File, Place Embedded, and I'm just going to quickly add all of our images in. Now I'm going to create a color palette from the images. I'm going to come back to my rectangle tool. I'm just going to click on the canvas and I'm going to make these 150 pixels by 150 pixels. And I don't want the gradient in here, so I'm going to go ahead and click just... Um, I guess a grayish color for now and I'm just going to make a few copies of this so I'm going to press the letter V on the keyboard to bring up these anchors hold the option key or alt key on a PC and then just drag this out three times I'm going to grab all of these and drag it out one more time so we've got six different colors here you can have as many colors as you want um, but that's just what we're going to be working with I'm going to bring these up just a little bit and then spread them out so i want this to end right here at the beginning of this one and this one i want to start at the ending of that one so i'm just going to grab them all shift and then grab the top one and i'm going to come up here and then distribute those just like we did before so we have all six colors evenly distributed and now to make this a little bit easier you know when you're actually working with this I'm going to come in here and add a solid color to these. The color doesn't really matter at this point, but I'm going to hold the option key and then you'll see that little square with the arrow. Just go ahead and click. That's going to create a clipping mask into this one right here. And then I'm just going to press option, drag this one down, create a clipping mask there as well. And I'm just going to keep going until I have that color clipped into all of these okay i'm going to grab all of these now and command and the letter g to group those and i'm going to label that colors i'm also going to group the photos as well all right so i'm going to start with our first color here i'm going to just double click and choose a color here from this image that's going to be our starting color and then we'll go through these and choose 
some colors just using our our images at this point and I'm going to go ahead and change the background color as well so I'm just going to double click right here on the far right hand side and choose drop shadow I want this to be very minimal so it's going to be multiply um, the drop sh the color is going to be 32 32 32 that's the hex code for that opacity 20 percent angle is 90 degrees our distance is a four and our size is seven I actually just want to bring this down even more so we'll leave our um, distance at two and our size at five I just want it to be a very subtle separation from the background so I'm going to go ahead and click OK and that's pretty much it for our colors now we're going to go ahead and add a little bit more interest to this so we're going to add a shadow cast here so I'm going to come up here to file open and I will have links to all of these images that I have here in the description so if you want to download them and try this on your own you can go ahead and do that so I have two I have this one and I have this one I think I'm going to use this one right here I'm going to go ahead and click open I'm going to unlock this layer let's see I'm going to zoom out and then I'm just going to make this really quick it's going to be a shadow so a lot of the details not really going to matter so we're just going to come here to the properties if you don't have your properties icon right here you can come up here to windows and then choose properties from there and from here we're just gonna choose one of the quick actions and I'm gonna choose remove background just to get rid of that and that's gonna add a layer mask here so I'm gonna press the letter B on my keyboard to bring up my brush tool I'm just gonna use um, just a regular hard brush to get rid of the rest of this stuff down here and I'm gonna apply that layer mask I do want to see what I have left over so I'm gonna add a background to this just so I can see what's there you zoom in here and again a lot of this will not matter so uh, don't worry too much about this being perfect I'm gonna come up here to select color range just to get rid of some of this I'm gonna press the plus dropper right there and then just grab some of this okay I think that should be okay I have a fuzziness of 20 20 is fine uh, range about 50% is fine I'm gonna go ahead and click OK it's made a selection of all of that I don't want to mask out the leaves I actually do want to mask this out so I'm gonna press command shift and the letter I or control shift and the letter I just to select everything but the leaves and I'm gonna mask that out so now I have kind of a lot of little lines and stuff here that I don't want so I'm gonna just go in with the brush tool really quickly and get rid of some of this stuff this probably won't even be visible when we make the shadow anyway but just in case we'll go ahead and get rid of some of it and I'm doing this with my mouse so it's not gonna be very accurate but really I just want to get rid of some of these lines okay I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out and I'm gonna apply that layer mask and I'm gonna come up here to uh, layer matting and I'm gonna remove the white around the outside okay now I can just turn that layer off so I can see this I'm gonna zoom out grab that layer and I'm gonna make it smaller so right around there I just want to give myself some room on the canvas because I'm not gonna actually use this I'm just gonna take the shadow from it so I'm gonna double click right here and then add a drop shadow to this I'm gonna leave my color completely black for this one and I'll bring my opacity up to about 80 percent our distance I'm gonna take up quite a bit so I can remove it from the leaves that way I can grab it with the mouse rather than you know moving things around over here so I have this shadow separated I'm just gonna add a little to the size I just wanna you know get a little fuzz so I don't want it to be as crisp as that so I'm just gonna add nine or ten pixels right there and I'm gonna click OK so now I'm gonna take this fill down to zero so you're not gonna be able to see this and I want to be able to select just the shadows so I'm just gonna come here and rasterize this and that's just gonna leave me with that shadow so I'm gonna take that shadow over to our canvas and drop it in there 
Okay, now that we have this in here, I'm going to right click and convert this to a smart object. Because we're going to be moving this around a lot, resizing it, rotating it, uh, we want to make sure that we keep the quality on that. And obviously right now it's pretty dark, so what we're going to do is just uh, work with the opacity here. I'm going to actually bring this down to about 12% for this one. You might want to even bring it down lower than that. But we just want this kind of moody, you know, shadow cast look. I'm sure you've seen this around a lot. It's been very popular these days. And then just adjust it, rotate it until you get something that you're happy with. I'm going to go ahead and leave mine like that. So now anytime you want to change out these images, all you have to do is come over here to your photos and then choose your image holder, double click it, change out the image. It's super easy, super simple. If you want to add more, all you have to do is, you know, duplicate these frames the way I showed you earlier, bring them over and stack them on top of each other. So if you're not really a grid type of person, they're easily stacked, rotated, and you can do a lot of fun things with these. So if you're interested in mood boards inside of PowerPoint, I also have a video for that. And I have a branding board video for Photoshop as well. So I'll go ahead and link both of those videos down at the bottom for you to check out as well. If you like this video, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Visit prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.